This is the best or worst podcast. And now, here are your hosts, Koji Steven Sakai and M. Martin Mapoma. Best or worst podcast. I am Martin. And I am Koji. And here we are, episode number 70. Unreal. All right. Our society is so focused on celebrity, we sometimes forget that regular people lead interesting lives, too. Best or worst moment of your life, hosts Koji Steven Sakai and M. Martin Mapoma are here to let your story out. We put people on the spot. What are you going to hear? It could be funny. It could be poignant. It could be sad. You'll know when we know. Best of Worst Podcast is a twice-weekly podcast on Tuesdays. We get to know our guests, and on Thursdays, we find out their best or worst moment. That was the slowest reading of that opening I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. Well, today well, we're really... You know, you know why? Because as an actor, I tend to... Because I, I had a really bad stutter. I tend to hold my breath when I speak, and I speak really fast. Uh, so I put I some... Speak, I talk really fast, too. But today we're really excited to have... Um, Ron Brewington, who is a broadcast journalist. He was, I was on his show and he could talk about his show as well. And we love, we have loved to have him here. So we're going to get to know you. Ron, why don't you tell us a little bit about, um, about who you are? Okay. Thank you so much. Um, I was born and raised in uh, New York city. Take it another notch. I was born uptown Manhattan. Take it up another notch. I was born in Harlem. Okay. Woo! I, I meet a lot of people who were born in Harlem and they say, I say, where are you from? Uh, uh, New York. They asked me, where are you from? I'm my mother, you know. But they don't want to go to Harlem. I don't know why. But uh, had a great time being born there. I had a great mother. We grew up without a father. My mother was my father and my mother. She did a great job. She had. I have a twin brother, Rudolph. He. We both do the same thing basically in life. Uh, but when I came out of high school in 1964, I got a birthday coming up here um, in a couple more days. I'll be 74. Wow. Um, we uh, were born and raised there and had a great time. So I joined the Navy. Uh, he came out of, I came out of a school called Aviation High School. Uh, I was taught to be a mechanic. Uh, today, to these days, I can't do anything mechanical. But back then, I had to. It was a good job. We used to wear a uniform. and We had a good time doing what we were doing. It was a lovely thing. I really enjoyed it. Went in the Navy. They assigned me to a, uh, a duty station over at Floyd Bennett Field in Brooklyn. So I had to go from Harlem over to Brooklyn and at meet. I was in the Navy Reserve, and I wear my uniform once a week. I, I'm sorry, once a month and twice in the summer. Had a great time. Met a lot of people. Was assigned to a VV-831, a patrol unit, flying the P-2 aircraft. Had a great time. Oh, wow. Stayed wow. in the Navy for a period of about uh, almost 22 years. Wow. I had a Ooh. great time in the Navy. Uh, uh, you want me to get into great detail about my Navy? And I just... I yeah. want to hear it. I want to hear it. That's whatever, whatever you like. I mean, well, I would love to hear also how you got into journalism from, from the Navy. Okay. The first 12 years that I was in the Navy, my job was that I used to teach people how to fly airplanes. Uh, oh. The Navy and the Department of Defense, when they treat people to uh, use aircraft that belong to the public, they send them to ground school first, where they learn everything they can be from Bernoulli on back and all up, whatever. Uh, then they get a chance to go into a simulator. And that's where they met me. I used to operate simulators. And then after we had gotten them and honed them to the skill level that we wanted to, we then put them in a real plane. So that way they stand a chance of at least uh, living longer instead of exploding or crashing a plane. Uh, that was a good time that I really had. And my last duty station doing that kind of work was at Naval Air Station Corpus Christi, Texas. While I was down there, I met a lady who became my wife. I had children while I was there, a child while I was there. Uh, but I also had a chance to uh, uh, change my job over there. I made it to chief petty officer, which is a good, pretty good rank. Um, and later I made senior chief petty officer, but that's another story. Uh, what, I, what I did was uh, I asked to change my job skill. I was, you know, it wasn't the same anymore for some odd reason. And I became, with you ready for this, a journalist. Wow, okay. Journalist is one of the ratings or job specialties that you have in the Navy. There are about 80 some different jobs, especially for enlisted people. Uh, so my, see, one day I'm a chief TD or trade men, and the next day I'm a chief JO or journalist. So I had to be transferred. They sent me to a little place called Adak, Alaska. Oh, wow. <laughs> are you familiar with the Aleutian Islands? Yeah. Yes. It makes that little bow like that. Well, uh, uh, Adak is right in the center of that. Here we are, this little tiny island uh, uh, with about, no, I estimate about 500 people out there with me, maybe a little bit more. 
But we had a great time out there. Uh, it was in the middle of nowhere. It was cold. They had the eagles out there. They had huge talons. They could, you could go out there and go fishing. You know, you better when you're fishing, you're looking like this because you want to make sure they don't come and get you and, and your fish too. Wow. At the same time. What were you fishing for, salmon? Uh, salmon, yeah, salmon. You could run. Uh, other fish that was up there. He was take, and take, as I was cheap, I'd catch my salmon and I'd take it up to my room and I'd cook it. And I had a stove and all that good stuff like that. So I could cook it. But it was a wow. really nice duty station. But I had a situation that happened where I ran into, uh, when I first got there, there was a similar chief petty officer, a male. He had been there for two years, two or three years. And since, because he had his family with him. I was single. I didn't have my family with me. I was there for one year. And I remember specifically that uh, for whatever reason, I, I, I can speculate for what they really were. Uh, they sent this lady, uh, Ensign, to be my boss. Yeah, I was... T. Petty Office in charge of, the, of this uh, uh, broadcasting facility. Uh, I had about 30 people working for me. We had 24-hour day radio, AM and FM, and we had about 12 hours of television, 18 hours of television. That rest of the time they're using for maintenance. And all of a sudden, this lady shows up out of nowhere. And uh, she was a young ensign. And uh, ensigns don't really know that much. They, ain't been, they might be officers, but they really don't know that much. They have to check in with the senior guys like us. And we tell them what to do, <laughs> how to do it. Anyway, make a long story short, her and I had problems. She walked in the room one day and told everybody that uh, if you want to see her, uh, you have to come straight directly to her. I said, no, it uh, don't work that way. I said, we have a little thing called the chain of command in the Navy. Martin, were you ever in the military? Me? I was not. Okay. I we had not. a chain of command. Hey, Coach, were you ever in the military? I, I was not in the military. Oh, okay. Uh, anyway, I wish I had been. I hate, I hate, and particularly now that I'm retired and I get a check every day for the rest of my life. A nice time. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I don't want to piss you guys off, you know. Anyway, uh, we, uh, she told them, told them that's annoying. I pulled to say, Ensign, there's something that's in the Navy, among other things that came, that happened in the Navy long before you came in, and it's going to be there long after you've gone. It's called a chain of command. Nobody goes directly from their level to your level without coming through me. I don't know. No, 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 Ensign. It don't work that way. Sorry. I'm an Ensign. I said, I don't care what you are. You don't do it that way. So our boss, we had a boss back in the Pentagon. I called the boss. I said, boss, you need to talk to this lady. This Ensign don't know what the hell she's talking about. And, uh, and to make it even worse, they had a Navy captain, a four-striper, who was the base commander. We were a tenant activity. We were det a broadcasting detachment. Our job was to provide entertainment information for the people that were living on that island. And, uh, and I told her, first of all, I said, don't let those four stripes scare you. He's just a captain, okay? You work for a commander in the Pentagon. If he asks you to do anything, you just tell him straight out, uh, Captain, let me check with my boss and I'll get back to you. That's how you do it. See, as a chief, I know how to do that. She didn't know how to do it. She was scared of those, those four stripes. I wasn't. Anyway, make a long story short, they sent me, I, I called the boss back in the Pentagon. And, I, and what I did, and I tell, hope that everybody will do this, every time you work at a job and uh, people are kind of strange. Keep a resume, keep a diary of what you saw happen. So that when it's time to lay, lay it out to the people that be, the powers that be, you got proof. And that's wow. exactly what I did. So they wow. sent me from ADAC to the Pentagon. Uh, and uh, I told them exactly what had happened. And all they could do was shake their heads. They said, hey, you got a problem out there. They said, but here, would you do us a favor? Here's the problem. You're an enlisted, I know he's going to say this, you're an enlisted man, she's an officer. She might not know nothing, but she still is an officer. I said, okay, so what you want me to do? We can do one of two things. We can send you back to that uh, detachment, but you wouldn't be working in the detachment. You'd be working on the, on the base there, which I know couldn't happen. Or we could send you to a place called Diego Garcia, way out in the middle of the Indian Ocean. Imagine, if you will, gentlemen, 3,000 miles south of the equator, 5,000 miles east of Madagascar. Wow. That's where I was sent a little island out there. It seemed that there was an E6 out there who was causing some problems. The reason that that was during the Iranian hostage situation. Wow. So oh, wow. they needed us, they needed somebody out there who knew what they were doing. Well, I get out there, I flew, okay, I, I left ADAC, went to, to the Pentagon, stayed there for three days, went back to Diego, I mean ADAC, Alaska, gathered my clothes and everything, uh, and then jumped the planes from uh, ADAC to see, uh, from, uh, to, what was it, Seattle, from Seattle back to uh, uh, ADAC, uh, no, Diego Garcia. Actually, I was going through the Philippines. And as we were going by, I, I could see ADAC as we were flying by. It shows you how world, close the world is. From, on my right side, I could see uh, ADAC. Anyway, I get there, 
they knew that a guy named Broington was coming. Chief Broington at that. And the problem was they didn't know that Chief Broington is black. They didn't know that. Boy, oh, wow. when, I, when I got there, I mean, mouths just rock. Wow. I said, is there a problem here, gentlemen? Is there a problem? I'm in the United States Navy, a chief petty officer. It should not be a problem. I said, I've shown my skill and my ability for what I can do. So the rest of y'all, get BP, get out of here. It <laughs> seems that the E6 that I was going to be, that I was, he was working for me and everybody else, uh, he had a problem. His problem was he was a white guy, and uh, somebody had messed with his wife, a black guy. <laughs> he was oh. with all black guys from that point on. He hated all black guys. And when I came in there and he met me and he knew he had to work for me, oh, he wasn't too happy at all. Wow, he wasn't too happy at all. So anyway, but I kept, but I, I, I kept, I kept him in his place because I had that rank. One rank, one, one stripe over him. I had that rank. Anyway, when I was out there, Diego Garcia, the first day I was there, the first night, uh, I was in. The, we had an office building where we, I had an office in the building where we worked out of, and uh, that's where we had our big studios and all the transmission, the satellites, and all the stuff like that. And I was sitting in my office looking through some records. And all of a sudden, I heard somebody say, Chief, Chief, I was screaming, Chief, Chief. So I went inside the control room and said, what's wrong? He said, the British representative is on the phone. So I said, well, who's the British representative? He said, uh, you need to tell he wants to talk to you. What it was, was that we were looking at an episode of 60 Minutes. We're Americans. We're used to seeing what's on 60 Minutes, like water and a duck. And it didn't bother us. What yeah. it was, that there was a, te a television show about a neo-Nazi group in London. And they were thinking that there would be a race riot there on Diego Garcia and people saw it. What? Where'd y'all get that from? <laughs> so I, I said, well, I told him this Brit whip, I didn't know who he was. He said, I want to see you in my office first thing tomorrow morning. I said, okay, I'll take your license. Said, we don't have a license to take. We, we are military journalism and broadcasting. We don't have licenses. So anyway, I went, so immediately after I hung the phone up, I went and tried to find the base commander, American base commander, uh, a captain, Navy captain. Couldn't find him, so I found his, his, his second in command, the executive officer. Told him who I was. He said, yes, Jake, we were expecting you, and uh, glad to have you here. And I told him what had happened. He said, what? After I finished talking to him, I sent off a flash message back to the Pentagon, letting them know what had happened there. Uh, you always do that. Uh, and let them know that I wasn't too good for them. They didn't like that at all. They detailed the lieutenant to come down there later and investigate what had happened. Uh, and so the next day when I, I, oh, by the way, that night, he told me to turn off the, that, take that show off the TV. So I had to make a decision. Do I listen to a person who I don't know who they are, what rank they are, didn't really care, but didn't know who they were, uh, or should I do what he said? We can deal with that later. Well, I did the latter. And I, I told him, man, put up a sign, technical difficulties, and we'll put something else up. And we did it that way. I'll see you in my office tomorrow morning. Yes, you'll see me in your office tomorrow morning. So I got there. When I walked in the door, and guess what he saw? Stunned. <laughs> Stunned. <laughs> what? What? what, what? Hey, doesn't matter. We're in the wow. United States Navy. And uh, we later became good friends. I showed him and told him what, what had happened. And he agreed. And what we did was, from that day on, uh, anytime any uh, of the material came into through us through armed forces, radio and television service, we would check it out to make sure it didn't cause, it wasn't sensitive and didn't cause any problems. If it did, we couldn't show it on the island. And see, we didn't have those rules and regulations before we had them now. So that was really a fun thing. Him and I became real good friends. What I would do is if I knew that a, a, a show was coming in and might be a little sensitive, I'd call over to the chow hall and have some coffee and, and, and crumpets sent over to my office and we had a chair set up there for him so he could sit down and watch the movie. And if it didn't piss him off, we could, we could look at it. So but it worked out. Everything worked out okay. That's and then I went I back to uh, seven months later, I went back to, uh, uh, where was it? Uh, uh, ADAC, checked out. And uh, that was where I, my, my day began. Really had a great time. Well, wow. quick, well, quick question about the, uh, your role as a broadcaster in the military or in the, uh, in the military. What is, what is the... What's the point? Like, you know, what is your message you're trying to you're trying to get across? Is it entertainment? Is it something else? Yes. Or uh, again, to inform the uh, since you're sitting on these locations, you, the military broadcasting is not allowed in the United States because you've got journalists and, and ABC, CBS, things like that. Yeah. Uh, they're only authorized in non uh, overseas duty places, like mm -hmm. Diego Garcia, like Adak, Alaska, where you got American troops there and you want to bring a little taste of America to them. 
You oh, bring oh, you, it's interesting. And then what happens is that the industry provides you with music, all the latest American music, all the latest TV shows, latest news, everything. You sanitize it, get rid of all the ads out of it, the television news, and you put it out over your over wire, and, and everybody sees it. So it's, it's wow. there for a good purpose. Keep their morale up, definitely. Okay. It's funny because it's interesting um, because my wife's family, they're all Navy. Um, uh, her brother was in the Navy, and her father, uh, who passed away a few years back, he was um, he's Filipino. Okay. He, he uh, reached the highest rank of, of, of a Filipino officer at the time before he passed away and he has some great stories about the navy as well yes. as did my as did my brother-in-law it was it was pretty cool so that's all. have awesome. you ever been to the philippines martin you know what uh i want to go um michelle my, my wife's uh cousins want to take me and i keep being told if you're going to go to the philippines you better go with your wife because you can't go on your own you'll never come back that's right <laughs> beautiful women some of the most beautiful yeah. women in the world yes they are it's <laughs> yes. it's you know, a friend once so a friend once said to me that uh, Filipino women are like the Swiss Army knife of minorities. They have all the good parts. Right. <laughs> you know how to them. use them too. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. And they also a great cook. Those ladies yeah. over there, some yeah. great cooks. I yeah. remember when I was in Diego Garcia. Every about four or five months, they would take us off the island. I should mention the island looked like a V. Uh, it was just uh, it was an it was a place that there's a lot of history on that island. Uh, you can see where the slaves from Portugal and other countries were there. Uh, they used to make a copra and other things like that. It was mm -hmm. one of those possessions of a foreign country back in the 1800s. And it was still there. It wow. was still there. It was still there. Anyway, but those are, we would go on what we call I and I to the Philippines. That's yeah. right. You guys familiar with that one? Cody, you familiar with that one, I and I? I've never heard of it. What does that mean? Intercourse and intoxication. Intercourse and intoxication. <laughs> <laughs> you met a lot. I met, but one thing about them ladies, let me say this about those ladies. Those ladies, if you hooked up with one lady, that was it. You didn't. Oh, go, oh go. yeah. Oh, Ooh. yeah. You didn't go from that. You didn't run around. You know, I'll no. take that. No, 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 no. no they do not, not play. play. They uh -uh. do not play. Uh -uh. Even now, they do not play. They, they demand respect. And they yep. Do. They sure do. <laughs> oh, man, that's so true. After you left the military, you you decided to start uh, in journalism. Where did you where did you first start to do some journalism? And and you teach as well, so right. Uh, well, like I did, I, I learned in the Navy. Uh, I was a journalist. I went to school there, and I had worked. Uh, and before I went to Diego Garcia uh, and ADAC, I had worked at the, at the Navy base there, the Naval Air Station in Corpus Christi, Texas. I was a journalist. We used to write newspapers, uh, conduct tours do all kinds of different uh, public relations and public affairs duties. And that's where I learned how to be a journalist. I learned how to write. Here I'm an E7, but I knew how to write. Yeah. And it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed the job that journalists did all around the world. And my specialty was broadcasting because when I was in uh, uh, Corpus Christi, I worked at a television station there, an NBC affiliate as a reporter. I also worked uh, at, a at two radio stations there. One was a top 40 DJ show. Uh, there's a guy named Greg Mack. You might have heard of him. He started this hip hop. Yeah, yeah. He replaced me. So I, that's how, when I left the radio station in Corpus, he came in after me. Um, sure. And then I worked at another radio station uh, where they allowed me a chance to uh, do all the PSAs, uh, announce PSA, public service announcements, out cue it on another community message from your friends at XFM. That's all I had to say. Wow, uh, that's pretty uh, good. Jonathan, thank you. <laughs> just, I call it. I, that when you hear me speaking and I say this to anybody and I mean it sincerely, I look up and I thank the man upstairs. Well, I look at it as a gift that God gave me to be able yeah. to enunciate, pronunciate, and talk with training. Yeah. Uh, and you gave me a gift and I use it as much as I can. I do narration for plays. I do all kinds of different things. I use that, that talent that God gave me. And I thank you. Him do you, a lot of, you do a lot of voiceover work as well? Uh, I've done some. Oh, yeah, I do a lot of voiceover work, yeah. I bet. Yeah, I have a lot of fun. That's very cool. But wow, I worked at, I worked as a journalist, and that's how I got my skills. I later I went to college and got my master's, my bachelor's degree in broadcast journalism, and then I got a master's in communication. But I got all of this information, you know, in, in time, in time in your life. Sure. Uh, yeah, I remember, like I said, going back to all those days in Harlem. Uh, I can remember why I joined the Navy because my mother, uh, when we got to, when we got to be a certain age, she told us uh, either you get your stuff together or you leave. And uh, we said, Mom, I hate to do this to you, but I got to go. Especially when she caught me in the house with a little girl. Uh, she said, get out of my house. I said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> get out of my house. Uh, 
That's all. Right. Those, you know, everybody got stories. You know, yeah, of course. Uh, well, Ron, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about the show that you that you guys that you do? And, okay. And let's fast forward uh, back. Uh, let's see. This is 2020. Go back five years to 2015. Um, thereabouts. I started a program called the Actors' Choice. Uh, it was just an idea. Everything starts with an idea. It's one of my favorite four-letter words. I love that word because it is what it is. Everything, anything that we have do or do, it's because we had an idea. And my idea was to have this program, which would be exclusively anyone who are actors, actresses, people in the theater, grips, gaffers. Uh, if you did soundtracks, even get a, a few of those I get in every now and then. Directors, anything. It's about that. Uh, we have done, uh, as of today, uh, we're looking at our 220th wow. program. That's crazy. Uh, wow. I shouldn't say so. We've been very, very blessed. I get a chance to meet people like OG. Yeah. Uh, and, and Martin, I hear you an actor. I am. I love theater, too. Okay. We'll I, be, uh, we'll be talking to you. Yep. Yeah, you're talking to me. I, I uh, you know, yes. I, I lived in Chicago for uh, eight years Ooh. and worked at the Goodman, uh, the Organic Touchstone Theater, a few others. Seen some great plays. I love theater. Theater's great. I, I didn't. I have not done any since I've been out here. Is that right? Yeah, it's very different out here. Yes, it is, and that's the problem. Most of the time, when you talk to a lot of these uh, 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 actors and actresses, they have attitude. Some of them, and it gets yeah. on my nerve. The attitude is that I didn't, I'm, I'm I'm a star, and you know what a star is, right? Yep. Spell it backwards. Cause you spell it backwards. Because it's <laughs> Wait, star. <laughs> you know, rats. Yeah, rats. Rats go back, right? And, oh, gee. And, and sometimes some of the people, they just don't, you know, they, they want to be on television. They want to be on the screen, big screen. But you say a stage, uh-uh, not me. I don't get up on that stage. Not yeah, me. It's real, yeah, it's a real shame because theater is, a, is, a, is, is an amazing art. Yes, it is. It really, really is. I, uh, yeah, I enjoyed it when I did it. It was something else, you Indeed. know. This coming weekend, I've got three, um, Monday, I've got three people coming in. Uh, David Palmer, who used to be with Steely Dan, he's going to be coming in. But he also does soundtracks. A gentleman by the name of David Nabell. David is an unusual situation. He's got about, on his IMDb, he's got three or four actor jobs. But in the other IMDb, the one that, that does the stages, he's got almost 100 plays that he's done. Uh, and wow. I'm happy to sit down and talk to him. That's nice. That's cool. That's very okay. nice. We'll, we'll talk. And what, uh, what kind of... Uh, do you mostly cover people of color? Do you do everybody or does it matter? Thank you, Goji. I'm glad you asked that question. Even though I'm a black man, it's not a black movie. It's not a black show. Okay. It's a show. And right. we take people, whoever you are, black, blue, green, yellow, whatever you are, we will take you. In fact, I encourage you. Uh, right. In fact, right. uh, Koji was a guest on there. I've, I've done a lot of Asians, worked with a lot of Asians, work with a lot of people of different, because again, that's what this world is all about. Yeah. Yep. You you have to and and you know if people just get up off that biased butt they got and understand are people are that we're all God's people. I mean, God made every race that you have out here, and we all have ten fingers and ten toes. And we all got red blood. Yeah. Well, blue when it's in your body, you know that kind of thing. <laughs> but you know, get off it. You know, this if you yeah. just spend some time with people and learn about their culture, the way they do things, the good food in there. The good people that you miss, the music. There's so many things, and I'm, I'm very funny about that. I make sure that every race that I know of, uh, I mean, in fact, I got one coming in next week, next two weeks. Uh, Native American lives down in uh, uh, New Mexico. Uh, we're going to get some of that. I've had a few Native Americans. Uh, I was saying, Koji, I said there's an Asian who did something very well recently. He uh, petitioned for that petition because I did that. Uh, he was able to get a star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame. James, James Hogg. Yeah, yeah, James Hong, yes. Yeah. And I sent him a note and congratulated him and glad that he did that because there should be more, more Asians on that walk of fame. Sure. Hollywood owes who they are, what they've done, in my opinion, to races of all color. Yeah, I agree. So you need to recognize them with a star. Yeah. And where can people watch your show? They can watch it on Facebook, YouTube. Let's see. We're on Apple, Spreaker, Spotify, iHeart, Google Podcasts, all that stuff. Uh, you can see it there. It's on every... Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And we also leave it up. Uh, it's on, you can always go, we have a, a, a link and that link will also, you can see it anytime you want, 24-7. Awesome. Well, so 11 a.m., is that 1,100 hours? Uh, if you want to look at it that way, yeah. it, it, on a Mickey Mouse watch, we had the big hands on the clock. <laughs> <laughs> don't mess with me, it's too early. <laughs> <now>. <laughs> 
Start no S H and there'll be no I T. Well, Ron, thank you so much for coming on. Um, really appreciate it. Yeah, it, was, it was really great to been, get to know you. Yeah, that was a, that's awesome. I love it when I get surprised. That was fascinating. And then we'll. Um, I have and, so many questions. And in the next episode, we're going to ask you about your best or worst moments. So everyone, stay tuned. Please, if you guys are watching the show, please. Uh, the best thing you could do is tell one friend about the show. Text them, email them, send them a Facebook message. Whatever you need to do, tell them about the yeah. show. It helps Smoke us signals. out. Yeah, whatever you need to do, and it'll be really helpful. So thank you again, Ron. Thank you again, thank Mark. You, yeah, thank, thank you, Ron. Thank, thank you. Ron. And we'll see you guys, in t everyone, in two days. Bye. Bye. All right.